Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're looking at a leak code problem called count the hidden sequences. It sounds a bit mysterious, doesn't it? But don't worry, we'll break it down together, step by step. The goal is to figure out how many different secret sequences could possibly exist based on some clues they give us. Ready? Let's dive in. Okay, so here's the setup. We're given a list of numbers called Bo in and Barim. This list tells us the difference between consecutive numbers in a hidden sequence we're trying to find. If the hidden sequence is say, H0, H1, H2, then differences 0 is H1, H0, differences is H22 H1, and so on. We're also given A and an number. These tell us the absolute minimum and maximum values any number in our hidden sequence is allowed to be. Our job is to count how many complete hidden sequences satisfy both the difference rules and stay within the lower and upper bounds. If no sequence works, we just return zero. Makes sense so far. Let's look at the first example. The differences are one, minus three and four. The allowed range is from one to six. Now notice the hidden sequence will have one more element than the differences array. Here, we need a sequence of length four. They show two possible sequences, three, 4, 1, 5, and 4, 5, 2, 6. Let's check the first one. 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 minus 4 is minus 3, 5 minus 1 is 4. Yep, the differences match. And are all numbers between 1 and 6? Yes. Same checks for the second sequence. 5 minus 4 is 1, 2 minus 5 is minus 3, 6 minus 2 is 4. Differences match, and all numbers are between 1 and 6. They say these are the only two possibilities, so the answer is 2. Here's another one. Differences. 3, minus 4, 5, 1, minus 2. Range, minus 4 to 5. The hidden sequence needs 6 numbers. They list 4 valid sequences. If you check them, you'll see they all follow the difference rules, and every single number in each sequence stays within minus 4 and 5. Since there are 4 such sequences, the answer is 4. Seeing these examples, helps get a feel for what we need to count. Okay, let's think about how these sequences are built. The crucial idea is this. If we just knew the very first number of the hidden sequence, let's call it hidden zero, we could figure out all the other numbers. Why? Because we know the differences. We would just take hidden zero, add the first difference to get hidden, then add the second difference to hidden, to get hidden two, and keep going. The entire sequences is locked in by the differences. Only its starting value can change. So if the starting number determines the whole sequence, let's explore that. Imagine, just for calculation purposes, that the first number, hidden zero, is zero. We can then calculate what all the other numbers would be relative to that starting zero, just by adding the differences cumulatively. Like in the first example with differences one, minus three, four, starting at zero we'd get zero, then zero plus one is one, then one minus three is minus two, then minus two plus four is two. So the sequence relative to a starting zero is 0, 1, dash 2, 2. Now what's the smallest value we hit? Minus 2. What's the biggest? 2. The total span, or range, from the minimum to the maximum in this relative sequence is 2, minus negative 2, which is 4. This range tells us how spread out the sequence is regardless of where it actually starts. Okay, now back to the real world, where hidden zero isn't necessarily zero, whatever the true starting value is, it just shifts that whole relative sequence up or down. The shape doesn't change, and critically, the range, the difference between its highest and lowest point, stays exactly the same. We calculated this range based on the differences, let's call it the sequence underscore range. We also have the range allowed by the problem, which is simply upper minus lower. Let's call that the allowed underscore range. For a hidden sequence to be valid, its entire sequence underscore range must fit inside the allowed underscore range. If the sequence needs more room than is allowed, if sequence underscore range is bigger than allowed underscore range, then no solution is possible. Right, so first check. Is the range the sequence needs, sequence underscore range, greater than the range we're allowed, allowed underscore range? If yes, we stop and say zero, it's impossible. But if the sequence range does fit, how many ways can it fit? Imagine the allowed range as a fixed window and the sequence range as a smaller block we need to slide inside that window. How many integer starting positions work? It turns out to be the size of the window, minus the size of the block, plus one. So, the number of possible hidden sequences is allowed underscore range, 
sequence underscore range plus one. Let's check our examples. Example one, allowed range was five, sequence range was four. Five minus four plus one is two. Correct. Example two, allowed range was nine, sequence range was six. Nine minus six plus one is four. Correct again. This looks like our answer. All right, here's the Python code implementing that logic. It looks pretty clean, right? We'll walk through the important parts next. Don't worry if it looks like a lot at once. The core idea we just discussed is all in there. Okay, first part. We initialize a few variables. One to keep track of the current sum of differences. This represents the value of the sequence element relative to the start, assuming the start was zero. We also need variables to remember the minimum and maximum relative values we encounter as we go. Zero is the starting relative value for hidden zero, so we initialize min underscore sum and max underscore sum to zero as well. Then, we loop through each difference in the input list. In each step, we add the current difference to our running current underscore sum. Then, we update our min underscore sum and max underscore sum if this new current underscore sum is smaller or larger than what we've seen before. This loop effectively finds the highest and lowest points of the sequences. After the loop finishes, max underscore sum holds the maximum relative value reached, and min underscore sum holds the minimum. So we calculate the sequence underscore range simply by subtracting the minimum from the maximum. We also calculate the allowed underscore range by subtracting the given lower bound from the upper bound. Then comes the check we discussed. If the sequence needs more room than is allowed, sequence underscore range greater than allowed underscore range, we immediately return zero. Otherwise, we calculate the number of valid starting positions using our formula, allowed underscore range, sequence underscore range plus one, and return that value. And that's the whole logic. So, how efficient is this approach? We process the differences array exactly once in that loop. The number of steps is directly proportional to the length of the differences list. We call this big O of n or order n time complexity, where n is the number of differences. That's really good, very efficient. What about memory? We only used a few variables, current underscore sum, min underscore sum, max underscore sum, etc., to store numbers, regardless of how long the differences list is. This means the extra memory used is constant, which we call big O of one foot, or order one foot space complexity. Excellent. All right, let's quickly recap the main points. The core idea was realizing that the list of differences locks in the shape of the hidden sequence. The only variable is the starting value, which just shifts the whole shape up or down. So we figured out the range or spread of this shape by calculating its relative values assuming a start of zero. Then we compared that needed range to the allowed range given by lower and upper. If the shape fit, the number of ways it could fit gave us the number of possible hidden sequences. And that magic formula was the allowed range minus the sequences range plus one. Hope that breakdown made sense and helped you understand the problem and the solution. If it did, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe for more explanations like this, or leave a comment if you have any questions, or perhaps a different way to think about it. And hey, if you're feeling extra appreciative, the Boba Fund link is always there. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.